So you've got Home Assistant all set up, or any other home automation platform for that matter. You've got your outside lights turning on when you drive up in your car of an evening, or your blinds closing of a night and opening of a morning, or even your central heating's coming on when it's too cold and it knows that you're all at home in the house. So sit back, pat yourself on the back, and have a well-earned drink, because you've absolutely nailed it. Or have you? Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Bite of Geek. So today's video is something a little different on the channel. It is all about home automation. Uh, don't worry, I've not gone completely off topic here. Um, but it is about a subject or it does contain discussions about a subject which some people may find um, slightly upsetting. You know, it talks about um, you know people passing away and stuff like that. So um, if you uh, you know have experienced some of that lately, um, you know, and you are likely to find this uh, this discussion a little bit distressing, then um, please just you know go and watch something else on YouTube um, and come back onto one of my next videos later on. But for everybody else, thanks for staying, and I really would like to hear your th your feedback on this when we uh, when you you've watched the whole of the video basically. So home automation can be really rewarding. You know, some of the stuff I mentioned at the top of the video is just the tip of the iceberg. It's a huge investment, not only in time, money for devices, but also people's knowledge. Many people like myself do home automation, kind of like to tinker around with and then build up from that. Uh, you know, you start off with your simple uh, smart speaker integrations and your light bulbs and things like that. And it can soon spiral out of kind of like control really, you know, you, you start building more advanced stuff into your home automation. But what about if something happened to you? Or maybe your partner, you know, maybe they're the, the smart home guru, you know, you're watching this because, you know, you like smart home stuff, but maybe they're the one that actually spends the time doing the, the tinkering away. You know, what would happen if something, um, you know, happened to them? Uh, you know, right from the basic level, you know, this could be, you know, maybe that that person yourself or them you know they're spending maybe an extended time in hospital you know you've been in an accident you're going to be laid up in hospital for a few weeks or maybe they've been in for an operation and you know likewise it's a it's an extended stay in hospital who's going to deal with all of the home automation whilst the, you know the that guru is in 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 hospital um you know i guess in some ways you know, you've you've got the ability to you know, to be able to communicate, hopefully, about all of this stuff, and at least then your family can carry on and at least use your house uh, to to some certain level, I would say. But at the other extreme, it could be that your family has actually gone and lost you. You know, it could be something like a blazing row. You've walked out of the house and you've never been seen again, or maybe you know you've been involved. You know, and it's been a fatal accident, and you know, unfortunately, you've passed away. Who is going to be around to be able to help them with that smart home setup that you've now gone and built fundamentally into their lives? And I bet the majority of users who are creating smart homes don't really think about this from the outset. You know, it, it's great to hook up the devices and get everything working, but you know, a recent post that I saw uh, with a, an awful lot of comments on it really did kind of put it into perspective that actually, you know and some people were joking about it, you know, it's just kind of right. Like, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, it, it clearly isn't something that people think of or not to the extent that they should do. And in this particular instance, you know, unfortunately this person lost uh, their partner and, uh, you know, they ended up then having to pay out money uh, in order to get the whole system rectified, you know, get electricians in and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, obviously it very much depends upon how complex your smart home setup is, but you know, you, if you're going for something or singing or dancing, you know, who's going to deal with that at the end of the day? So what can you do about this? Well, you know, I, I've come up with kind of like some thoughts around this. I, I think, you know, obviously one of the, the fundamental ones is, you know, making sure that your house is dumb as well as smart. And I know that, you know, is contradictory there, but, you know, that kind of computer sat in the corner, you know, if you switch that off, you know, it's running Home Assistant, you know, you turned it off, 
Can all your light switches still continue to function without that computer working? You know, do security cameras still record footage and, you know, is that easily accessible? You know, does, does your heating still come on? You know, it, minus five outside, do people end up sitting there in the house with no central heating waiting for a heating engineer to come out because you made it smart? That's kind of, you know, the basics of what you should be thinking of to, to start with. I guess, you know, if you if you can't go down that route, you know, maybe, you know, it's a cost thing or something like that, or maybe you've already gone down a different route and, you know, it's difficult to go back on that, then think about bringing your family along with you in terms of your smart home uh, configuration and setup and everything, you know. Go through kind of what the devices are, your configuration of them, uh, your automations, all that kind of stuff. How many of you actually sit down with your partner actually explain you know how this stuff all works you know okay they may have no interest in it but at least you've been through the process you know they may well then come back later on and go and ask you more questions about that you know hopefully they will try and understand that you're trying to help really them you know to to be on board with this you know and what they could do if something awful did happen but i think the main thing here is is you know even if it is a slow process to go through that is don't let it put you off actually trying because keeping it all inside your head and keeping it to yourself doesn't actually help anybody within your family and lots of us who implement this stuff you know we're, we're kind of in groups you know whether it's facebook groups or you know we're, maybe we're on reddit or something like that uh you know home assistant forums and things like that you know how many of us have got friends uh, you know a, a circle of friends who are also doing home automation uh, you know, can you kind of like come up with some kind of agreement with them that, um, you know, maybe if one of you, you know, something happened to one of you within that group that, uh, you know, you're able to actually help um, your family out, you know, in some way, even if it's just a chat on a mobile phone, you know, a voice, uh, voice call or, you know, video chat or something like that, you know, some way in which they can help support your family in probably what would be one of the worst times to go through. So Home Assistant has a lot of information about all of your devices and, you know, you'll have set up things like naming conventions and all that kind of stuff. But is it the only place where you're documenting all the details about your devices? You know, what about maybe setting up a spreadsheet or something like that, you know, that, that has, you know, the manufacturer of the device where you could go and buy a replacement? Um, you know, the kind of cost of it, what, even what type of batteries it takes. You know, if you're using Zigbee devices, you know, or Wi-Fi devices, you know, they're going to be potentially using batteries a lot and, you know, automations will all be set up uh, with these devices. And so if the batteries fail on it, other automations are going to start failing. So, you know, just being able to work out, you know, what things need to be bought at a very short notice just by looking at a spreadsheet will be a great time saver, saver and, and obviously it's super helpful for your family at the, the time when they need to be able to get that information and likewise if you're using a bunch of cloud services for storing information you know, maybe you're integrating with Nabucasa you know because you want your Alexa devices to be able to link up with home system where you know your, your cloud storage for your, your security cameras I mean where are all the credentials for being able to access that I bet you've either got it you know in your head or you know you've got a password manager uh, which is great um, but have you shared access to that password manager you know have you got details of where these things are and what they do you know the last thing that your family wants to do is to kind of like pay out for some kind of next level hacker to be able to start trying to get access to your accounts um, so that they can continue to use this home automation system so for some of us when we're building a home automation system we go beyond kind of like that basic raspberry pi just to run home assistant or a, an old laptop or something like that that you've got stuck in the corner um, you know some of us build out a really complex system and you know obviously everything that I've just talked about applies to this as well so you know you've got Proxmox running you've got PFSense you've got your router configuration all these kinds of things you know how are you sharing that information you know the list is endless so don't forget to you know keep your family involved on that and you know make sure that you've got that information 
detailed for them to be able to, you know, at least somebody be, to be able to understand it, even if it's just another family member. Now, what I will say is that make sure you've got more than just a plan A. You know, life has this habit of throwing you know, the, the unexpected at us. And down below in the description is a link to a, a GitHub repository um, where somebody's gone and created their own disaster plan. Obviously, they've, they've um, kind of uh, hidden some of the more confidential uh, details in there. But it's a, a great document. You can use it uh, as, a, as a template, you know, to be able to build something yourself. But if anything, if you go and have a look at that, you'll see really uh, the kind of detail that, you know, as somebody who might be, uh, you know, somebody who's into IT, you know, who knows all this stuff, who, who kind of, um, you know, this is kind of like second nature kind of things, is really the kind of information that you should be thinking about that, you know, if you want your family to continue to be able to use what you've created, um, you know, you should be kind of like keeping a copy of that kind of information. And I'll also put a link down below in the description to a fantastic book on Amazon. Uh, it's a relatively cheap, so, you know, but it, it gives you a lot of insight into kind of the things that you should be thinking about when you kind of like need to plan about this. You know, there's some really trivial things here. You know, I've recently seen a post about how family members couldn't even get into somebody's mobile phone, um, you know, when, when something happened to that, to that family member. So, you know, really basic stuff like that. Um, and this is a great book to, to help you understand some of these things. So at the end of the day, you're implementing a home automation system to make everyone's life easier at home. So make sure you're, you're doing it right from the start so that everybody gets full enjoyment from it for years to come. Okay, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about this video, something a bit different on the channel. I did think about whether or not to do this one. Um, you know, it's certainly not the normal uh, type of video on the channel, but, uh, you know, if you've thought about this kind of, uh, you know, kind of like subject and, and kind of, you know, what would happen, uh, you know, if the, the circumstances did, did occur, you know, have you gone down that kind of route? I'd love to know um, your thoughts on all of that, you know, drop them down below in the comments. You know, what are you doing to make sure that everything continues as normal uh, for your family, you know, and, and life carries on for them without having to stress out, um, you know, if something happens to you. So, you know, drop it down below in the comments. Um, also, you know, obviously feedback on the video, you know, whatever you thought about this, obviously, um, you know, interesting subject. Um, but if you've enjoyed the video, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.